And my dad offered me a, a Sony Walkman, the, the Sony CD player, you know, and, and uh, it had a Phil Collins disc with it and a Survivor. Thomas decided that I had done something to offend him. And he blackmailed me. Good evening and welcome to A Fresh Angle. Once again, I'd like to thank you for all your support, the likes, the subscribes, it all helps. Want to repeat that if anybody has a question or a comment, very glad to discuss that. So anyway, I, I kind of want to tell a story here. Let's get off the, the chronicle of my life and just go to sort of a fun story. I'm going to call it Forbidden Fruit because, yeah, you'll, you'll find out. I was about 19 years old and uh, my brother, Thomas, he's a little younger than I am. He had cut down an oak tree and had it rough sawn on a sawmill. My dad found out about it. My dad really likes to do woodworking. You know, he, he does that for a hobby. He, so he called up and he says, uh, you know, I have this toolbox full of tools. I'll, I'll just trade it even with you if you give me that uh, the stack of oak lumber. So Thomas was like, well, I don't want the lumber, but I do like tools. So it was like, oh, okay, we'll do that. I heard about it. I wasn't directly involved, but I really wanted to see my dad. I respected him. And so I was like, can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Anyway, they told me, okay, you can go. Manasseh is going to show for you boys down there. You can go as long as you stay right by him and do whatever he tells you to do. You know, what could go wrong, right? So I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, so I'll do it. So we get going down. It's about a 17-hour trip. We, we're driving down the interstate. It takes all day. We get down to uh, South Texas, and uh, Manasseh decides we're going to stay with his dad-in-law, which was my mom's first husband. And it's about 15 minutes from my dad's house. And I was like, oh, okay, I understand. Uh, I want to be over to my dad's house when we said we were going to be. We said we we're going to be there 8, 8.30, you know. And he said, yeah, yeah, no problem. So I go to sleep and at about 6.15 in the morning, I'm already up. And I'm like, hey, guys, we got to get ready to go. We told my dad we're going to be there and I don't want to miss this, right? So Manasseh's like, oh, okay, we'll go. And Thomas is like, yeah, we'll go. So we're milling around and, and I'm watching the time. Of course, no wristwatch, but I'm watching the clock on the wall and I'm thinking, mm. you know, it, it's 7.30 and we're still not out of here. It's, you know, what's going on? So about eight o'clock and I'm getting frustrated by now and I'm like, guys, let's go. Well, mom, mom's ex or first husband gets up and says, hey, uh, why don't you have breakfast with me? And so Manasseh, it's his dad-in-law, he's like, sure thing. You know, and he's the Mennonite redneck, you know. So we eat, and it was a good breakfast, but I was irritated because we're missing the obligation. We told my dad we would be there between eight and 8.30. We're sitting here eating breakfast and it's only 15 minutes away. And so we get finished. I'm like, hurry up, hurry up, you know, and I'm, I'm the irritating one, right? We get finished with breakfast and uh, Manasseh's dad-in-law says, uh, hey, Manasseh, I, uh, I've got this bookshelf I bought and it's still in a box. I can't figure out how to put it together. Can you help me? <laughs> this is 8.30 in the morning. He goes, sure, we can do that. And I was living. We finally get over to my dad's house by about 10 o'clock and my dad is upset. And, and rightly so, we disrespected him. And I told him it wasn't me, but he told Manasseh and, and the other Mennonite guy that was with us, he said, you need to get off my property and let me have some time with my sons. And he told my brother and I, he says, you disrespected me, we're gonna have a good time, but because of this, you, you, we just need to make the trade and you need to leave. Anyway, we made amends and we had a good time then, but I was feeling really irritable. I felt like I'd been wronged. So. When I say the next part, it made a little more sense. Normally, I would not have taken any kind of contraband. I was a very conscientious young man, very conservative, and uh, tried to do my best. But at this point, I was so angry. And my dad offered me a, a Sony Walkman, the, the Sony CD player, you know, and, and uh, it had a Phil Collins disc with it and a Survivor uh, disc with it. And uh, because I had been wronged, I felt like I was right to take it. So I put it in my truck and, and I love music. So the temptation was complete. And I put it in my truck and, and you know, I'm hiding this because I don't want Manasseh to see it and I don't want Thomas to see it. We get back home and I stash my new CD player in the, in the shop. It's a tiny little shop, but I stashed it in there. Nobody's gonna find it, right? Well, yeah, I couldn't hide it because I was sitting there and enjoying it one day you know, I'm playing Survivor, and Thomas walks in, and, and he's like, I knew it! And I, I was like, hey, don't tell anybody, please don't tell anybody. And he's like, tell you what, I won't tell anybody if I can have 50% rights to it. 
And I was like, whatever, man, just don't tell anybody and you can have 50% rise to it. Well, guess what? It turned out he had 70% rise to it or whatever he wanted at that time, or it was going to be blackmail, right? And so he got it and he discovered there was even a radio uh, player on it. I didn't know that, but he could get Nashville and everything. But about five weeks later, Thomas decided that I had done something to offend him. It was, it was pretty significant, whatever it was. I cannot remember what it was. And you know how brothers are, you know, I mean, he has his dirt on me. So um, I became aware, uh, my mom actually made me aware. She said, I don't know exactly what you have that you shouldn't have, but Thomas is going to use it against you. If I was you, I'd get rid of it. So I packaged the CD Walkman up, my precious gift, the Phil Collins of Survivor, and I kissed him goodbye. You know, these are pretty special to me. I packaged them up and I put a note in there to my dad saying, you know, hey, I shouldn't have had these, I'm so sorry. And I shipped it off. And sure enough, three days later, Melvin comes to talk to me. He one morning approaches me and says, I've got to go to Nashville, Curtis. He says, uh, I want you to ride with me. Sure enough, get in the truck in two hours, two hours one way. The whole way I got to hear how bad I was. I got to hear how disappointed he was. I got chewed out the whole way to Nashville while he bought his toolbox and the whole way home. And I mean, we're talking about like five hours of chewing. I mean, in a truck, we're like side by side here. So anyway, we're, we're driving home and finally I was to my breaking point. You know, you get chewed out long enough and, and you've just reached it. You can't take any more. And I said, well, how did you know? And he said, well, Curtis, Thomas told me that you had it. And I said, Melvin, Thomas liked it as much as, and he cut me off. He said, Thomas said you'd probably try to blame him. And I said, what? And he goes, yeah, Thomas came to me in tears. And he said, what a struggle it was for him to resist that temptation. I said, he did? And he goes, yeah, he told me he'd probably try to, you'd probably try to accuse him. And he said, I want you to know this is about you, not about Thomas. That poor boy has struggled enough with what you put him through. I want you to go to the bishop and I want you to confess. I was like, well, I already got rid of it. He said, it doesn't matter. I want you to confess. I said, well, but, but Tom, and he goes, I don't want to hear about Thomas. Thomas came to me and he told me what a struggle it has been for him all this time while you were there in your shop listening to it and how, and how it just tempted him. And he was a better man for that. So end of story here, my brother, Connivingly, <laughs> we get along today, so he's a good guy. But at that point in time, he blackmailed me just because I'd done something to offend him, and he loved that thing as much as I did. Of course, he listened to the radio, and I only listened to the CDs. He loved that thing as much as I did, but because he was offended with me, he found a way to get in the back door and then make it look like I was going to turn on him and make him look guilty, and he was. Anyway, I did confess to Marvin, but I made it as short and sweet as I could. And I let him know that I had already taken care of everything. So thankfully, I didn't get kicked out of the church for that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the story tonight. Any questions, comments are welcome. Thank you.